All right, so it is 6.33, starting the um, Senior Community Center Building Committee meeting. We do have a quorum. Uh, hey, yes. um, approve meetings from the prior meeting. Yeah, yeah I sent them out to everybody. Yeah, everybody. I'm making a motion to approve the minutes. Thank you. Meeting. Okay. Second. Perfect. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. But that's uh, that's the easiest thing to do. That's the first thing. Yeah. Jody's going to be coming mm -hmm. here. Um, I think she said she's going to be here at seven. She mm -hmm. has a new document that she did with you and Mike. Or, uh, she, sorry, she was working she on was that. Today. So she wanted me to look at it and just comes up. You know, Is that so, the one okay. that tells about the taxes? It's what, the taxes. Oh, we can and, wait for that, great. And then the offset. So what it is now that you're not doing the other override and with the debt dropping off, what it's going to look like. Perfect. So. So we'll do that when she comes. We'll just move that agenda item. Um, and then next is Tom and Peg. Oh, okay. Yep, for, well, we'll start out with communication for meeting updates. Okay. Uh, print materials, Facebook, Facebook, and scheduled meetings. This will be it in a nutshell. Hey, Mike. Good evening. Okay. What we've been doing is we did have to, in fact, we met, was it today? I think it was today. Yes. Um, Facebook has been doing very well. I have been putting uh, something almost every day on the Menden Senior page. And Karen, with the Menden Mass Bulletin, she's been picking it up and carrying it. It has been a lot. If, if, you, if you're not on Facebook, I understand that. But if you are, go in, at least go into Karen's uh, thing that says Menden. Did you notice there's been a lot of comments? Oh, yeah. And uh, Karen and I are both trying to answer them in a very respectful way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No wise guys. Yeah. Oh, no, no. There's none of that. None of that. And uh, so the main question we've been receiving now is about how the incline of the property is going to work for handicapped people to be using it for walking trails. I think Phil is working with that with um, yeah. and, and Mesa. Uh, to try and see whether or not when she gets the architect okay. to look at it, how they could manage that. Because that's one of the things that someone was objecting to. And of course, they did a, we did have objections to the site. And there was a lot of questions about why aren't we where we are now. So anyway, um, well, Alana has, Elena is working on a postcard project which yeah. we all worked on today so go ahead, yeah. yeah so i just want to mention that uh we're kind of crossing over into the a ballot campaign committee territory if we're going to put money into any materials that are specifically about a ballot question so yes or no on so um i <coughs> advocating for us somewhat splitting off any any like people who want as individuals want to promote this campaign that would be in communication with the the communications group for the messaging but like any time that we spend money that ex, like says vote yes that becomes like a like the state oversees it with campaign finance laws mm -hmm. so um so uh, I have volunteered to be a chair of this committee because I've dealt with the paperwork before and Tom has agreed to be the treasurer. Um, so we're not going to be like actively seeking funds because we can't do that using town, um, any any municipal, any public resources. Mm -hmm. So we're just, we're going to separate that a little bit, but we'll, you know, share share progress and definitely sort of mess, keep the messaging consistent with, um, with this group's efforts. Um, I think the term you used earlier was uh, in kind. So yeah, so we're talking about doing in kind donations, any individuals who want to pay to get something done, we are not gonna be as a group like buying anything, but it we, we will be like tracking any in individuals who want to say purchase signs, such as a community member has made, you know, volunteer to buy signs so we have to track that any it's it, you know especially i think there's a threshold of over 25 dollars that needs to be tracked with the state and by track with the state it's a form that we fill out and file with our town clerk and if there are any questions from the public then yep. you know she can show that we're doing things the correct way one of the things we talked about today was a postcard campaign 
You're going to get a list from Ellen of yes. people who attend town meetings and yes and vote at the warrants and things like that. Yes. So, so we have a we have voter lists. Um, so we're um, for people. So registered voters in Menden, as well as you know, subsets who attend town meetings regular, or you know, we can you know have multiple lists as well as those who voted in elections. And so we can uh, you know message those voters, like send a postcard to the voters. So not this group, but the offshoot group of like independent citizens who want to support the the yes initiative. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to the friends meeting on Monday, and I'm going to talk to it in the language that I'm not violating the law, but I'm <laughs> strongly suggesting that, uh, you know, we could use some help in right. many ways. And right. They are our financial arm of the right. yeah. senior center, but even to write out the postcards, we thought if we had just used um, the address labels and things, but leave room on it for like a personal note. Yeah. And I'm happy to show people like the, I think the you concept should, yeah, design. Don't design. Have a I mean, I think, well, I'll show, you know, it, since it's not finished, we're not, well, no, I mean, it's not this group that's doing it. So I will show you as individuals, anyone who wants to see it and you can give input. Right, but, but it's, it's part not of the communication. Right. It is part of the communication. It is, it is connected to the communication yeah. message, but this committee is not going to be doing the postcard. So, I mean, the the expansion committee is not going to be doing right. the postcard. Right. You have a question about all this, Lonnie? But Lonnie. So, yeah, not so much a question about the um, about what, what you guys are speaking of now. I just I'd raised my hand about the concern of the um, slope or grade over there on on the field. Uh, but I can hold it until after. I don't want to interrupt what you guys are talking about. Well, I, I don't have any information on that because Phil and Ann are discussing that because I think part of her CPA funds, she was going to hire um, some a design person. Like no, so what, 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 I, what I was getting, sorry, what I was getting at was, so I, I lived right there for, I don't know, however long I lived in that house. Um, the slope is nowhere near as drastic as people are making it out to be as far as being able to walk on it. We've parked we've used it for parking and people walk on it uh, all the time. If we are going to make walking trails on it, um, then they would have to be ADA accessible anyway, if we're going to be creating some sort of walking trail. But yeah, because that's, that, that, that property being a slope that like, you know, you're going to fall down if you walk on it. Totally not like that. It's very, well, the comment it's, was I, I, I uh, hinted my horse there and uh, that horse had difficulty climbing the hill. I think to be ADA compliant, it's going to be to a certain grade. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the ranch we have outside the area. Yeah. It's all great. So. so we're taking that under advisement because someone has experience in in the field. But right. there's, there's multiple grades there, right. so it's, it's not a, like it's you're a gonna, big field and a right. big hill. I'm, I'm kind yeah. of in those fields. There's a slope. There's nothing. Yeah. Right. I use them for the town of Menden. Yeah. I mean, if you go down into the, the stream down there and the, oh, the generic, yeah, yeah. You're, you're in the woods. We're not like, going to be going down there. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't yeah. be down there. Yeah. The way the building is, it's a slope, but it's not. No. I'm just it's trying to find the windows. It's New England. You can't have flesh. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. It doesn't last long. <laughs> anyway. What we have to realize is, unfortunately, if someone has a negative view on, on this project, we're going to yes. see that they're going to come up with all kinds of excuses to try to right. bring out a negative right. light. So we just have to, like we're doing, saying, hey, it's got to be a, you just said it perfectly, so did Lonnie. It's got to be uh, compliant with the state laws. Well, I'm inviting people to our oh, next yeah. meeting, yeah. the next open house that we have. Yeah. Yeah. And I like I said, there, I there was like Every 58 day. comments. and. Both Karen and I, I thought, were very respectful of people. And I to tell you the truth, if I didn't have the answer, I honestly said, I'm sorry, I don't have that answer. You tried to get it. Yeah. I'm not going to make up. Another question? Sure. Ask another question. Of the, of the 58 comments, yeah. how, how many people commented? Okay, I don't that. know. I'd have to I'd have to look at them individually. Okay. I, I, yep. Are you on Facebook? Uh, I... I <laughs> kind of. I, I can go take a peek. <laughs> yeah. Just look under Karen. Look under like Menden Mass oh, Bulletin. Up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know where it is. Okay, let me, I'll take a look. Oh, yep. Thank you. Because I, I don't have that information. 
Uh, I'm trying to think. We've we've uh, been to different places talking. Um, no, I, I I'm a pessimist. I'm going to just tell you that right now. And luckily, Phil's an optimist because sometimes I think, well, it went okay, you know. And he'll say that went great. And it's just the way you how you, you look know. at life. Yeah. I don't know. And you know, people can be fooling me. And when they get to vote, you know, they'll vote their conscience. It's hard to read people. It just is. Yeah, I can't. The, the key is, and I say this, we have to be happy with the effort that we're putting in. Oh, and I if it passes, hooray. If it doesn't pass, yeah. I'll be sad. Right. But I know you did the best. You did the best as a yeah. group, that's did right. the best we could. And that's fine. Yeah. And there's people in town that are going to vote no one, no matter what it is. That's right. right. That's right. There's always people in town. Yeah. So all we can do is, again, just try to yep. emulate a positive atmosphere and a positive attitude. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm curious. Uh, um, I have not been contacted at all by any other person. I know that my email address went out, and I think Phil's did too. And it will go out again in the newspaper that goes to Menden and Upton. But no one has contacted me yet asking any questions except in social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, no, no, I'm keyboard warriors. <laughs> the only negative I heard was about the fireworks. Fireworks? What about it? And, and, oh. not, and not be able to have fireworks out there anymore. Should this project right. go through, it'd have to be a new venue, if at all possible, for fireworks. I think. It would be too close. Right. Well, we, you know what? That's something Probably, too. Maybe, yeah. Lonnie, can you reach out to the fireworks guy that you know that does that? Because they shoot them down farther down, so it might not even be an issue. I mean, we do it at the park, no, it's right next to no, the no, it, it, it would be an issue there, but we have we have other spaces in that area uh, that we're okay. going to utilize um, before, like right behind the town hall um, on Shelley's property. As long as he was amenable to us using that field behind the town hall. That one is a is a viable solution. Yeah, yeah I know there are the yeah. There you go. I think we could figure that out. I mean, when we used to do Imperial, the three car shows, I mean, the fireworks are right there. Yeah, right. Kind of building. You know, the last ways we I just heard comments. Yeah. Well, like even I said, if do, even if we were to do them from the field from the field behind Imperial. I like because I think well, obviously we're talking about the Christmas parade, right? I think that's the only time we do them there. Yeah. Um, you'll be, I believe, if we shot them from the field, you'd. St uh, I mean, it might be, it might be tight. Anyway, there, there's plenty of places we can pick. Yeah, if you figure out those things. And the uh, the other impacted element was uh, was brought up was the circus. Circus. That might be circus, a good thing. Circus. Every time you look at Facebook, half the people don't want it down. They're yeah. mad about it. The, cir the, the circus isn't impacted by this. The, the circus is the circus is not impacted by this site. What the circus will be impacted by is the new projects that's going on the corner by the owner. Right. Um, and secondly, we can move the circus. Oh, they just packed more to the yeah corner. They use that well. Yeah. 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 Y
Oh, I'm just asking. I don't know. No, I, I, you'd have to ask Phil that, but my understanding is it does not. It includes a certain amount, like fixed furniture, like right. uh, well, that, yeah. you have desks and tables that are fixed into the walls, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, but it's, it's not going to be like and your, your chairs and your yeah. your function it's tables. Things. And yeah. I think those are included. Well, we're yeah. coming on the budget. By this. <laughs> Yeah, and that's well, the we're thing. hoping to come in on the budget because we've got that amount built in. You have a big contingency. Yeah, the Is contingency. The, yeah. Something like that, that this contingency covers something like that. The type of furniture. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. once once a building, if it gets approved, then this committee takes over the whole process like we did before. Mm -hmm. The chair will lead it. We'll get a, um, a secretary will want to really? treasurer that will want to do get it real permanently. Yeah. Um, then yeah, we we'll then we start the bidding process for the OPM. Um, but we we follow it from start to end. And at the end, if the funds aren't completely distributed, the 13-2 that's approved, you can use that contingency to, to furnish the rest of it, the things that we haven't done. You have a contingency there to protect you in case we hit ledge, like we did with the police station. We would have, we would have had money to furnish this if we didn't have to move our tank and turn it around. It cost another $250,000 to do that. If we didn't do that, we would have had this whole place furnished with the, with the project. So that's good. And the, the contingency is there for the emergencies, and then that's why you don't build the furniture into a lot of them. When I've heard that, you usually have that contingency left over. What happened in my town? Um, we went to the senior center. It's probably 18 years old now. I, I was only there for two years before I came here. They had no money for furniture. Um, there's a local company called Caliper, and it, at the time they were upgrading, and so they. We got all of their furniture. We got filing cabinets, desks, shelving units. I mean, we we outfitted our um, computer lab with you know desks that are there's tables that are bigger than this. It was pretty good. I mean, one thing we did have to buy is like the for the community room, all the the chairs and stackable chairs and things like that. But you never know. There could be a business. Well, that's business just a question that was asked. Mm -hmm. And the, the no, that's a good question because that's a lot of money, especially with the the large room we have. Things like that. Um, Mark, can I ask you a question? Certainly. Um, you got my my text right about uh, Founders Park, putting it on the board. That's correct. Yep. Perfect. So we're all set for that. That's like the 18th of April or something to the 26th or something. Oh God. The date of the open. actual open house is yeah. the 22nd. Uh, for fourth, I think twenty fourth. I think I asked you to do it like the week before through the twenty fifth. And that it'll be the week before the actual date. Okay. All right. So we're good on that. All right. So that's going to be on the sign in Founders Park, so people will see it when they're driving by about our open house, our second and last one. So we might as well roll into that. So print materials, I think we are covered, with, uh, and then Facebook, we got that covered. So. Phil has on his schedule of meetings. Are there any other meetings that you guys are going to that you might want anybody else so. to come to or any support for them? Or I don't, don't need to know we about? We haven't really talked about the schools yet, and I don't really know which way to go with that. Anybody have any suggestions? I mean, do you want me to send a um, inter request um, to the superintendent's office to have them send out to families? They, what they do is they send it to the individually to each of the three schools and they would send it just to men and families to let them know about the informational meeting. Um, only problem with that is our centers aren't that big. And also school vacation in April, isn't it? No, school vacation, school they're not doing it? school vacation is the week before. Oh, okay. It's the 15th through the 19th. Oh, okay. Right. Could we do something at schools so like at the auditorium at this school? Offer to do something over there. Not a lot of time to plan it, but. Possibly. Giving materials to the library. I beg your pardon? Giving materials to the library now? Uh, I don't think we do yet. We need to. We I think need that's to. a natural library. synergy between senior center and library. Mm -hmm. I'll get some up to Andrew. You know, you have these little pamphlets that you passed out there. If you put them as business, they pick up the read. Okay. So, okay. Them up and house, the of gas. Don't get plenty of Why don't we ask some of the teachers or the superintendent to ask some of the teachers or the smaller kids to write essays about senior centers and seniors so we can kind of promote that as a. We've been trying for four years to get back on track. Back on the program, but yeah, they want. 
to have 60 people involved, and that's way too big for us. But now, um, right today. No, they do. They right? put it on Facebook. Like, <laughs> you're, you're right. You're right. But these kids are a little. And they probably don't, the fourth grade is that devices? I don't know. Yeah, they do. They do fourth grade, is it? They have tablets or? Uh, well, they do it's like phone books and things Chromebook? like that, yeah. probably, because it's all digital. At least that's yeah. what I heard last night at the meeting. And they don't carry them. Chromebooks are in the Four year olds. Little note. Yeah. Yes, my grandma would love to have a movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have an AI rated for them now. <laughs> it's just a thought. No, that's a good thought. We're, we're running out of time, but what, if it does get approved, we should definitely go with that approach as a, to keep a positive. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. We always did have a good relationship with the school. We do. With all of the schools, we between volunteering it was after, and, and, and it was after COVID. You know, during COVID, everything stopped. Yeah. Yeah. We used to go up there, but with the second graders, we had the pen pals. Third graders. Fourth grade, we went to. Uh, BBT for the health thing. They I always to wanted to the lab, but they're not ready yet. They, no, they always wanted to poke and prod the seniors. Hey, you know what I did? Sure, still alive. I didn't know Peg. Um, so I spy on Facebook every now and then too. Um, when I was looking at something last night on there, I did see the comments. I think they were like forty last night. No one's talking about um, the food pantry or um, the emergency management shelter. Maybe we should try to focus on that too and push well, that out there. You know, besides. You're right about that, and I think, Tom, you had made that suggestion, too. We had agreed today for her postcard to try to do, like, five bullet points of, like, like a grab-up. Like, yeah. this is what, and, and I worked on mine this afternoon, too, and I did put the food pantry, yeah. and I did put the emergency management. Yeah. So this is where you get back to the target audiences. Yeah. So even with the library, I would have to look at Andrew's schedule and understand what programs are running. Okay. And try to piggyback those from an audience standpoint. And then depending on who's there, I think food pantry and emergency management might be um, of interest to a young family, you know, that, you know, is there. That's a good suggestion. Okay. So, but I just feel like their calendar is pretty full to, to just try to get that traffic. Mm -hmm. Seeing it would be a good idea. Very good. I mean, the people that use the food pantry, do they know about, is there, communication about the new building or has it been with it so they know what you know, we're trying to do so looks like you know 75 percent are seniors mm -hmm. you know 25 percent are families so um, i think the seniors know because they, they get newsletters you nope. know um families when's the next pickup is it the beginning of april next friday a week from today well you can maybe put an abbreviated yep. uh thing in out of curiosity, those percentages, do you know what that might equate to in actual numbers? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, we have, we have like 50, 50 families. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I say uh, or 50 households. Mm -hmm. 50 households. Yeah. Sometimes it's a single person. So, so maybe just like one or two voters in those households. Mm -hmm. But and it could come down to one or two votes, especially when oh, yeah, the election oh, yeah. went nothing contested yeah. right now. A lot of them are yeah. frail, though. A lot of them are older. Yeah. You know, in their 80s, they might not, they may not drive, they may not, going to the female town meeting may not be on their agenda. So we're hoping. They don't to drive to the town. I think, yeah, I think that's oh, what's important. I think the town meeting is, and you can, oh, it's hard I for see, things yeah, not to go to the town meeting. Can you? I thought. Yeah. The election. The election. Not for the town right. meeting. Not, not, the, not the not the vote. Third, do you, vote, you run that, do you have to do it now? Do you have to sign up now for it, or? There was, I mean, Ellen talked weeks. about that. Yeah, so I think, yeah, she said requests are still coming in. Okay. So there are, I think she so said. mail-in ballots? Yeah. Well, that's for the yeah. second one, though. That's and then I think she does something at the town hall, too. Okay. Well, it's actually two days after the town meeting. It's like, yeah, 11 days. No, two weeks, isn't it? 11 days. Okay. Is that business days or? Between the different time frame between the uh, ATM and the election for two weeks? Or it's 11 days. 11 days. <laughs> so May 32, May 14th. Okay. It's, it's in the bylaws that it's 11 days later. That's why. Like... Well, the, we, we know that the friends are going to start reaching out to all of their members mm -hmm. and uh, find out if people need rides. Mm -hmm. We'll find out where we are on the warrant. I think the biggest audience of all is uh, the schools. 
Right. Yeah, you want to reach the parents, and that's probably by sending something home. Yeah. Well, right, but through, you know, through the children or somehow connecting with the parents. Yeah. I think that's the big. That's the big. It, it's tough though, because if you look at part of the numbers, like you have, it depends on elections. Like right now, with nothing going on, you're gonna have a low turnout. And if there's not anything with the school, usually, or any contested um, don't come positions, out. you don't see the turnout. You're gonna see it in the the names and the stats that you look at. It's I, I don't see this being a huge turnout. I don't know if you feel you guys are talking really about, different. Are you talking about the meeting? I think, I think both. I think the senior yes, center is. bring it's more. I think so. I th yeah, yes. it, but it might, the still it might open, bring people both. Or do we fall? Yeah, everybody in town. Yeah. Because part of the rollover with an election with being contested and the town meeting is the interest. If the interest isn't there, if town meeting small, then those people aren't going to roll over into there, and that's where you, what the pessimists might come in. You worry about the no's that kind of come together, I I find and the yeses out there. People are uninformed too. Yeah, that's the thing. I just had my taxes done. The guy lives in Menden. He's in his sixties. Nothing about it. Yeah. His wife knew nothing about it. I asked him how he feel about senior centers. What senior centers? What are they doing? Senior in community. Well, I know, but the existing. Yeah, no idea. Right. No, you're right. And a lot of the new developments, when we drive through and we'll talk to another one off Northbridge, we'll just yeah. stop and talk to people from the cruises. Yeah. Um, most people just aren't involved in general. They don't come out to vote. They don't come to the town. He didn't, meeting. He didn't know what the senior center was now. They, they're coming from Boston area now. We have no real explosion. And they're just happy that their taxes are low. And that's it. To them, this is low taxes. Right. If he's 60 years old, it's probably so, getting our newsletter. To your point, yeah. then, you don't think the yeah. financial yeah. one act? To them, no. We, that's why it'd be great to try to get them out. Yeah. Because you, you get a lot of them. I've talked to them. Like, you know, they come from Natick and Framingham, and they're saying, oh, geez, our tax is half of what they are here in our house. We're twice as much. This is great. You know, for them, it's dream. Because um, it's been in the newsletter. I mean, it's been on the front page of the newsletter. I told him that, but he's, I don't read that. <laughs> and then how many other people are in town like that? There's a lot. So then yeah. how many times do I go to Milwaukee to walk by the trash and I get over this, this is like an override. It's gotta be it's gotta be door to door. Well, so, so that goes to yeah. say that goes to the we talk about yeah, post yeah, post we talk, yeah, so we talked about doing it, maybe sending something out to every household and kind of broach that. That's what you should do it. Well, uh, I mean we we could. So so I mean that there's you know, not this group, but the group that's yeah. <laughs> right. but, uh, so every there's every door direct mail. A lot of people don't read those though, those sort of big glossy postcards, like they kind of go right in the recycling yeah. bin. Um, so like a small hand, like partially handwritten note, like some people will notice that because it's make it look like a check. <laughs> 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 But, um, but I mean, I but we, we, could, but we, we could we could do some limited canvassing like of new neighborhoods, for example. Like you know, like there there probably are areas where we could at least you know. This is where Ellen's Ellen records could show you where there's regular participation. Right. Well, that's right. that's what yeah. we. And those are what the ones we're going to target. Right. And and we could you know mm -hmm. if yeah, there. I would are, go the other way. I would target those that don't regularly. If you're going to go door to door, right. I would go to those new, newer neighborhoods that. Right. Well, and that that would actually be good, especially if they're like more walkable. Like, Not this committee, the other committee. The, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, the other, I agree. Yeah. So, so we we can talk about that, and there's there's you know there's time for that. Um, but not that much time and not that many people. <laughs> but but like I think, you know, especially some of the new neighborhoods where like they're mostly people who are new to Menden, they don't they might not even know how our town government works. So like it might be nice for someone to reach out and say, like, yeah. hey, these are the things going on. They they don't. I had um, right. two yeah. years ago, I invited yeah. some people from up in Northbridge as a as security yeah. consultant and his friends in the neighborhood, yeah. the and they all showed up to the annual town meetings. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing they showed up. They said, this is interesting. Yeah, they they, show, yeah, they still okay. talk to them and try to get involved, but that's yeah. the thing. They'll come to one or two, and right. if they have their interest, they'll keep coming back, and if not, they'll, they'll, this is right. not for me. I don't want to argue about roosters. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, I have to excuse myself. I have a conservation meeting. All right. Well, this year, I have to attend. Yes, that will. We got your ideas down. We're, we're almost done anyways. We just so, I was kind of waiting for Phil to get here, too. Yeah, a couple of Regarding the, the free press, 
Thanks, Mike. Have a good night. It's just, it's always tough because it's like some people are just really hard to reach. Like they, you know, the same people who don't, I mean, I might be one of those people too. Like I don't, like with mail, like I have specific things that I look for in my mail and then other things I don't. So like, I, I don't know, even an insert, like I feel like there's some people we can reach multiple times and I think we should, but then there are other people that like, any of these things might not get through, but, and I don't know, but it, it's worth considering and we can like. Because we had a good response. I said, in, yeah. uh, insert in the, the paper. Okay, yes. For us. We had a good response from the food pantry flyer. Okay, okay, that's good. And again, they, they went down in price because uh, the printer that bought the newspaper um, is in charge of it now. And it's like it's less, yeah. less than it was before to use two different entities. So okay. I think we're going to save about $300 for the whole. Well, that, I mean, that would be good. I mean, we, yeah. We'll so take letters on it. Be aware, be aware of your taxes, something like that, to get their attention. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, so yeah, we can. Something like that. Real positivity here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but they had so you hope not because if you don't get it this time, before next time is instead of thirteen million, it will be fifteen million. Right, right. Amy, do you uh, know, you know the, the deadline for yes. that? Yes. Um, well, the deadline, the deadline for submission has already passed for, you know, for the paper itself right, and regards our information in, but um, to do an insert. They probably have a little leeway, but because the paper comes out around the 12th, the 11th or 12th. So we're talking like April, yeah. April 12th. Well, no, no, that, it's got to be, that's delivered to everybody. Right, no, no, but I mean, right, but I'm just saying that would be the one yes. we need to be yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We only have one shot. So, I don't know if you met, um, the uh, editor was at the 20, on the, our, our informational session on oh, the 22nd. Okay. Yeah, she, yeah. Was that the? Um, oh, Teresa, I saw. Teresa. I, I saw somebody following you around. Was that true? Okay. So like, no, I, I did the grand tour. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't meet her. Yes. So, um, so Amy, that comes out. You said around the fourteenth. Twelfth. Twelfth. So we might be able to get May two for the vote. Uh, too late. No, no, it's too late. Well, no, we, May twelfth, and it was May fourteenth for oh, the oh, ballot oh, vote. For ballot. Like, it's yeah. close. It's close. Yeah. We could maybe talk to them at the same time and see if the May one will be out. Before it, it's now that girl that came, she she's writing an article. Is it? Yeah. I'm saying it twice. Don't do it once. I mean, I now and then think about it, and then them to remind them. About it. No, but I mean she was read taking a lot of notes herself. Yes. yes. Yeah, she's actually going to write an article. I thought so. And ABMI was, was there also. Yeah, so yeah. it's on cable. Very well, is, I, is it on cable? I can check. Is it on cable? Well, I would think by now. You, no, he was working on the graphics today. Oh. Uh, um, uh, wasn't, sure, of, wasn't sure if you were Pat or Peg. Correct. Okay. Because you had your last Up my right? heart. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, one yeah. other thing um, I heard from Kevin Rudd saying that he is all for this project and he would like to, uh, he intends on speaking on the floor uh, of the meeting supporting this. Tell me about committee for him to join too, a new committee. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can, uh, uh, yeah, I can. He, I'm just saying yeah. what he said, and oh, he said, "Yep." And uh, he said he was all for it. He'd be more than happy to speak about it. So I took that as good. He is the ADA officer in town. Perfect. So yep. when Phil and Ann start talking about trails and mm -hmm. things like that, you know, they might want to include him. Mm -hmm. yep. Who's going to present it in town meeting? Probably our architect, I would say, yeah. and then. The board will, will the board say anything about it? I mean, I'm, obviously you guys are supporting it, but we have not talked about okay. it. Like, and then Phil and I talked today about some of the finer details. He said he'll be up there. I told him I'm more than happy to help him with the finer details. We'll come up with everything that we think that we should put together on it and speak. You know, obviously voice our support publicly at the meeting. So. And Fincom, you think Fincom's going to go with us too? Don't know. Don't know. Okay. They're probably going to want to see Joey's on this before yeah. they. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's okay. You know, that's their job. I, I, I mean, I think I think there's a vocal member of FinCom that asks asks a lot of hard questions. I get the sense other members of FinCom are probably supporting. It. I mean, Mike's on FinCom, so we know Mike's. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's right. 
I don't think there's been like a full presentation to FinCom on the project. I thought Joe did that. I'm not sure that he has yet. Uh, yeah, well, but, but it wasn't on the agenda. No, like it, he, he, he did it off the top of his head, he did a good job. Oh, okay. But it wasn't, it was more about um, the capital planning. Okay. Oh, that's that, right. But I mean, I, I think. I think we should bring it back to the select board. If we have joint meetings with. Well, actually, it'll, we should probably do it when we review the warrant, vote the warrant. True. You know, and the warrant, warrant, warrant. Right, and right, and hopefully our uh, town moderator will do the warrant walkthrough. I want to say it's actually and next week, April totally third. Yeah. We have to have it done by April, or the ballot's going to be ready April eighth. So, I mean, I think like when we're going to do like the final walk. I mean, so we have to finalize it. But, we have to close but, it next right. week. But like, we'll still be <laughs> probably still talking about it. Like. We yeah. just can't make any changes right. to it, but I think the motions are still going to be. There will be a formal hearing uh, on a schedule, schedule, yeah, in April on the town site. We're, we're still every week here on out. Yeah, but there's not the poster for that. No, I know. Specifically, no. Usually, usually you have a, a close on the warrant and a review at the same time, and it's a special meeting just for that. Usually don't do it during the, the um, regular select board meeting, right? Well, we went next Wednesday, as far as I know. I can close. We're definitely closing, but we can still modify mm -hmm. language if we need to. Like, technically, it could be reopened if it had to be. I think the, I think the drop dead was uh, just before printing. Is that? Yeah, it's 22nd, 22nd, 22nd print, but the ballot language has to be done by the 8th for Ellen. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's what kind of sends it today. to the printer April 9th. So, yeah, earlier is better. But yeah, that's, but the ballot. I mean that. Yeah, so town council has she's amended the warrant article and now she's got the ballot language and she's going to have that back on Monday. Okay, thank you. All right, so we got messaging done. I guess we can move on to. I'm going to wait for Phil. He's supposed to stop by and talk about the operational budget. Phil and I sat down this Tuesday and went through um, with Amy's budget some potential operational questions that we may get asked about. You know, increases. Um, well, we asked last night for some increases. Yeah, it, it'll be when we look at the bill. And, um, so, they yep. Phil said that to do to work on it. He said that yeah, we did. Kind of, is it double or triple what our current? Uh, in terms of just operational expenses, not salaries necessarily. Yeah, there's no salaries. Uh, equipment we went through like HVAC. We tried to estimate based on the contracts that they have here. Uh, cleaning, cleaning supplies, toiletries, all that stuff's going to increase. So we kind of came up with a list with it. Um, and we came up with a, a bottom number. Uh, so just go, go through it, I guess. So the bottom number we figured out based on contractual services and increase the supplies would probably be 30,000 in a building maintenance account. So that's what we would need to support that building. Um, and that would be 30,000. 30, 30, 30, yeah, 30,000. It's a lot for her budget because her budget is 60,000 and she hasn't increased it in 10 years. But just 2,000. We asked for 2,000. Yeah. Which, which Amy's been very. It's the responsible. I mean, he's kept her budget probably lower than it should have been. Yes, that's a little years looking at it. it. We probably should have been increasing that budget with certain items. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking more in seeing a budget increase over two years. Incrementally, mm -hmm. we can build that in. Right. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what's it's the, the headcount. The headcount and the hours are the big thing. Right. right. It's been yeah. 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 And we just last night requested like 18. Just to get an idea of the percentage of increase. But I mean, that, that 30K would build into, I mean, you're going to need the HVAC contract once you start going through it. Ours originally here was over 12,000. I was able to get down to about nine on a three year contract recently. So we kind of based it on a little bit more than what ours would be here. Um, and then uh, you're going to have things that you just didn't have before, like security contracts to monitor your key fob system, to monitor your cameras. Um, you're going to have a boiler there that's separate from the HVAC that you have to maintain that. I don't know if this is even done. Can HVAC be looked at at a municipal level to contract out HVAC? I think we're just about there where we should be doing that soon. Yeah. And then when you say key fobs, I'm like, we should just, we're, we're layering that into the existing system, I'm yeah. assuming. Right? That's a little bit tougher because um, your system is different than our system. Our system is signet, they installed it, they maintain it. 
Well, and her system should be either one of yeah. the two that exists. Exactly. <laughs> so I imagine hers probably will be like our signets, the big one when you do big fire projects. Like yes. They get most of the contract and the bids. So she'll probably be linked into us. Um, why and they only they all link it together. Why didn't we? Uh, yeah, but why didn't we? Why did we go with a different one? Signets very expensive. Very Even expensive. additive. I mean, we're talking about yeah, signets. They're good, but they do a lot of state contracts and they do a lot of municipal buildings on a large scale. So for them to come here and do something here small. To to what extent can we um, look at schools as well? Because I guarantee you next year we're going to see some roof work coming in from the schools from yeah. a capital standpoint in terms of just shared yeah. contractual services. I think on a broader scale, we need to get more with the schools. And you and I talked about this. Yeah. If we can sit down with their finance and superintendent and talk about their contracts in general with town contracts, especially now that we have a building like this, if we have a building like that, it's going to make sense for them too, because they're going to get a lower rate now that we can actually contribute. When, it was, when we had small little buildings before and we didn't have much to contribute, it wouldn't have done anything to that pricing. So they probably wouldn't want to have it through the right. exercise with us, but we're getting modern buildings. Just Even like tech support, when they're talking about the need for increased tech support on their side, yeah. we have no tech support on our side, you know, so mm -hmm. there's, a, there's an opportunity there as well. And they've done something similar with Upton already. Yep. You should get in on that. So I think after, once we get to the summer, when we get this, hopefully it passes, then we maybe start having talks with them. Because by that time, I'd be rolling off my HVAC. If that building built, they'd be looking to get one and see what their contracts look like. It's just part of the capital process and yeah. raising it, so. No, it's great idea. Um, so that pretty much is expenses. I mean, I don't know if you guys have any questions about it. it that's actually pretty reasonable. What kind of heat is going to happen? Gas heat? I mentioned they're going to do propane like we have here. So I based it on propane. And I figured how much we're spending on propane right now um, on a yearly basis. And I, I threw that into there too. The propane yeah, costs. Yeah, gas right out of the corner. Yep. Did you, sorry, include electric? Yeah. I didn't include electric. Uh, the only reason being is I don't think anybody pays on electric. So mm -hmm. we'll have to figure that out on the tax side. I don't have those numbers available right. to me. Okay. So we'd have to pull it from well, why would we the CA and figure out what they're paying. That's my question right now. That's a good question. Yeah. So we have yeah. it, I guess. <laughs> and periodically, my whole inbox is <laughs> national <laughs> grid. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. So So there must be an account somewhere. If we can do solar panels, like if there's, you know, if there's either a separate grant or if there's enough left with the community. Years ago, that, 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 hey, welcome. We should start thinking about the different things we know are going to be in scope yeah. after we start that line. Hi, how are you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know if they can do that. If you're trying to sustain the building, that's not going to look in. John was just saying there's natural gas pipeline right at the corner of the 16. I'm not sure how far. We can look at that, but I'm not sure how far it goes. I think that's something we have to explore when we start doing the building. Okay. Because gas or propane, it's going to be, they're both compatible. So they, they fit them differently. So it's not like you can use a different system. It's just how you can feed it and how much it costs. Them. So I think once they explore, they actually the build passes, then you'll determine if you do propane or gas. Okay. Gas is probably going to be a little bit cheaper, you know, if they can tap in off of it. Yeah, propane uh, but, is but figuring out, I'd rather figure on propane. Propane for us is not expensive. Nope. Um, I was able to work out a, a deal with DeLeo Gas in Worcester when we renegotiated uh, the town and this building. And we went from paying, I don't know, three and change to the last bill I told Phil I just got three days ago, a dollar eighty-five for propane when we fill up. I mean, we're, we're doing a thousand gallons when we fill up, here, so they're going to give us a good rate. And we we run town hall and other buildings. So once you do, once you to your point, once you start adding the buildings together, you're going to get better rates here because. We didn't get those rates for propane. Yeah, well, town Hall was paying four bucks before. When they did from 16, they wanted to run it down the center of town, but for some reason, they weren't interested. Yes, sir. I thought he had a question. Yeah, oh, I, I don't know if I missed it, um, but um, there is natural, there's natural gas there available. Yeah, I know that. Okay. So that allows you to just help out the finances. That's what I just said, money. Gas on the corner. What's, what's that? There is gas on the corner. I know that. Yeah, yeah, the gas goes up to the school. The only thing is, we'd have to pipe it all the way down to the back. So underground propane may be better, especially if you're talking about getting a better rate. The more we put on propane, yeah. the school on gas. I don't think it is. So. What's that? I don't think it goes. I don't think the that? school gas. Yes. It doesn't go down North Ave, right? Right, Lonnie. 
It only goes to the school. Goes to the school. Hmm. Natural gas. The school is on natural gas. They piped it up from the from the street to the so school. They have so it's already there. So it's like it goes across the street. I understand. So I, I understand, yeah. but you got to run that pipe all the way down. And if we're talking about getting a better rate on propane because we're going to put more buildings on propane, the underground propane tanks may be a better idea. Yeah, so we can cost that up too. Yeah, got to go one way or the other. But if you're yeah. going to develop that land anyway. Well, you see, we don't know what we pay for gas or you would pay for gas. So you don't talk, know, you talk to the school. What do they pay for gas? Compared to. Yeah, what do they pay for it? Are they getting any special rate because it's fed through yeah. Hope deal, right? So. We should check in on the other work that's going to be developed on the corner of the airplane. Mm. What, what are their plans? Lonnie, do you know what they're going to do on the corner? Lonnie? Hello? You there still? Sorry, what was the question? What was do you know what, they, what, I, what Imperial or Kevin's planning on doing on the corner over there? Just some commercial buildings, from what I've heard. I don't know for sure anything. Well, they gotta heat them. Yeah. Yeah, but what does heating them have to do with the 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 the, the senior center? Oh, I'm just. I'm She's just, saying running propane. If, yeah. if we could share a line and then branch off. Right. Especially if you're going to develop the back of that land. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I guess I'm just missing the question. I'm just looking at what is the cheapest alternative. So right now, if we natural ran, gas, if, or if, if, if 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 we took natural, if we took, if Kevin puts, if if, if Kevin develops the corner, right, which they're planning and working on right now, right, that natural gas is going to come off of Route 16. That's the shortest distance, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah, he's right there. Back. What's that? Because he's right there. Yep. He's right there on the corner. That's his land. Right. Exactly. If we want natural gas, we're going to have to come across the street from from um, where there's where the pipe comes up North Ave and then and run it down, or come in from Route 16 side straight 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 through the field, right? So we could come that way. All I'm depends saying depends how the pipe is sized. What's that? The, depends how they size the pipe going to the school. Okay. Re regardless, it's probably shorter to take it off of Route 16 anyhow. So if we if we um, if if we can get figure out, hey, we'll get a better price on natural gas. It may be worth it to run the pipe, um, or if we're going to try from the town standpoint get better pricing for the police station and other places that are going to be running on propane, then we would look at the underground tanks at the site. Yeah, okay. we'll, just All right. we'll just do an analysis because I think the one eighty five that we're seeing really right now, I don't think you get cheaper than that. I don't think people can get propane cheaper than that. Now. That's that's pretty low. All right, if we can, uh, we'll skip back around. Go to Jody. Jody, you need yep. to log in or are you logged in? I'm logged in. I can it? share okay. when you're ready. All right, what's yours? Well, hello. 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 Um, I'm going to go ahead and start to share um, the PowerPoint presentation. Just a quick deck that I put together to kind of summarize all of the debt discussion that has been had over the last couple of months. Um, There we go. All right, so we can just put this kind of presentation over here. Okay, so um, one of the tasks that I've been given um, in sort of my role as a treasurer, but also the finance director, is to look at different debt scenarios um, whenever the town secures debt. So preliminarily, we have looked at um, multiple options over the past uh, couple of months, including, you know, um, actually before I get into that, my quick agenda is this, we're gonna review previously shared debt scenarios, I'm gonna present a new scenario, give a quick recap, and then discuss next steps. Um, so the, what I was mentioning is that we have gone through um, multiple iterations of debt issuances um, and what those might look like and what the impact ultimately is to taxpayers. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, part of the message. Go ahead. Can, oh, can you make that bigger? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. The, 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 like the presentation present down at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, you know why? It's because um, there we go. That's what I was looking for. And I just said, yeah. okay, thank you. 
Thank you. You have to forgive me. Um, this is, I kind of threw this together really quick just because I, I think that visuals are always important in explaining yes. stories. So um, I thought it would be most helpful to do it this way. So again, we'll just kind of review where we've been and where we're going um, through these agenda items. Um, as I was mentioning, we, we first started looking at six, eight, and ten million dollar options for the building. Um, we started with intervals. Um, we shared this information back on January 16th. Um, just kind of recapping, we were looking at a five hundred thousand dollar home value. We shared different bands so you could know, hey, is my home worth more than that or less than that, and kind of get a guesstimate about what your tax impact would be. We shared it, you know, I'll just look at the $10 million one. It was 225 a year for a $500,000 house in town. Um, the finance team recommended an equal principal approach. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the details about equal principal level debt, modified level debt, ban, TANs, and general obligation bonds. It's too much in the weeds. Um, but at a, at a high level, the tax impact, we were looking at a $10 million um, investment was $225. Since then, we got new information, new information identified. Um, actually, before I do that, this is a visual. So when we talked about calculating this $225,000, uh, sorry, $225 on a $10 million note, um, as well as eight and six, part of our assumptions in doing that was that we were, we were not taking this new debt and stacking it and squishing it into our existing debt. What we were doing is saying, okay, that red line up there, right here, would be. Should I maybe just give Phil a minute? Yeah, it's out. Okay. Thanks, guys. Phil, hey, Phil, didn't miss too much. Jody just started. That's important. What you been waiting for? Yeah. Oh, by the way, here's some renditions of anybody haven't seen. Them. So Phil, I was just picking the team up on um, sort of where we've been with debt projections and kind of where we are. So this is a visual based on um, the six, eight, and ten million dollar models. Um, the assumptions are critical here when we're understanding where these numbers came from. Um, they're documented here, and, and just to kind of run through them, they're going to be pretty similar in each of the scenarios, and I'll call out what's new in each model. But we basically assumed a thirty-year duration. Um, new debt is not stacked against the old debt. So what you'll see is the blue chart down below is what our current debt looks like. That's our current debt model. The green in the middle is our debt capacity. So when I've talked a lot about level debt capacity, that line and anything under it is our capacity to be able to create no impact to taxes um, because we're accustomed to paying that level of debt. Yep. So any new debt above that, red line becomes impact to taxpayers. Yep. So when we talk about $225 on 10 million, so I left only the purple up there, which was 10 million. So that $225 that I showed you on the previous slide, right here at the $10 million mark, $225 per homeowner, okay, on a $500,000 home, that came from this purple area. I'm sorry, my mouse is a little slow to catch up here, yeah. but you'll see, Sorry, I just have to do this because yeah. I want to make sure I drive yeah, this home. My mouse is over here. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay, so, okay. Yep. So I'm representing this number right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this number represents a $648,000 payment on a $10 million note. Okay. So that's what this represents. Again, it's everything above level debt service. And we do that for a couple of reasons. Early on in a project, you do not want to. Um, overstate and under deliver. It's one of the worst things you could possibly do. We want things to get better. So we're going to just go with a scenario that says, look, if we did nothing else but add to what we have, this is what it looks like. So we started out in that manner. Um, again, we didn't stack it against the other debt and kind of fill that capacity, that level debt, that debt capacity in the green. Um, we had planned on a debt roll off. Um, of capturing that through a one-time debt exclusion. So that green that you see to the left of the purple and down, that represents 2025. So that would have been in 2025 so that we can secure that debt capacity. I wanted to propose a capital debt exclusion so we didn't kind of lose that, right? Um, 
you can't see the years down below. I understand it's small, but that is FY25, the first green line, mm -hmm. and everything else is 26 and on. Um, the new debt would have been secured in 25, obligated in 26. When you issue debt, especially if you're looking at a ban, um, you're looking at usually 360 days to maturity. That being said, that's when that bond comes due. So if we do short-term borrowing, that's when it would come due. That's when your payments due. The other thing I want to make sure is all through these models, this is illustration purposes only. We are using calculation data based on FY24 numbers, um, based on the town's valuation. That's a key component of the calculation. We have no way of knowing what the FY25 valuation is because we're just not there yet, right? So we're going to use the best information we have available, which happens to be in FY24. We're also using the tax rate for FY24. Um, which gives us our one of our factors um, in our calculation. So again, based on the town's valuation, based on the tax rate changing, these numbers will shift a little bit, um, but I wouldn't say by major percentages, but just know that these aren't in stone, okay? Um, again, the first year payment, equal principal. I did have all of the different debts in here, but I said, you know, we're just gonna look at 10,000. So only look at $640,000 was the first payment. OK, for the first year. So that's that's how we got back to that 225 per household. OK, everybody with me. Yep. All right. So next scenario number two that we presented, we said, all right, here's the deal. The building is going to cost more. <laughs> run, a, run a scenario on 13.2. So in running a scenario for 13.2, we still made the following assumptions. Um, we assumed a 30 year note. OK. Um, we assumed, actually, I'm kind of jumping ahead to this slide. We assumed a 30 year duration. We um, also said that the debt is still not going to be stacked against um, the, pro, you know, the, the levy capacity, uh, sorry, the uh, level debt service. So again, you'll see, um, you'll see that here. Uh, wait a second. Nope, I goofed. I did this a little fast. Give me one second to calibrate. Uh, is this the right chart? Yes, it is. It actually is. So the debt is stacked against um, our existing debt. OK, so that that I didn't highlight as being new. Um, we were still going to, though, capture the debt roll off in that first blue area, that FY25. So you'll see the first orange is FY26. So the one to the left of it is FY25. Yep. Um, so we were still going to capture that debt exclusion. OK, that one time capital exclusion. And then we we started with our payments, and this is just how it was structured based on the borrowing. Um, and go back one slide. So the tax impact here that we were communicating out most recently is that two hundred ninety-five thousand dollars would be for a five hundred thousand dollar house if we were to leverage an equal principal option, um, or a level debt service option was two hundred fifty dollars for a five hundred thousand dollar household. Okay. So that those were still the two kind of borrowing options that we were honing in on. Again, the option down here, um, the assumption in this chart is that we were looking at um, an equal, what were we looking at here? Um, equal principal um, option. So that first payment that you see represents, um, let's see, we were looking at 846,000 or $707,000. Um, as far as as that goes to, to craft that payment. Can um, everybody see these numbers or is it just me? No, I can't see the numbers. No, I know. It's okay. It's all right. It, it, you get the gist. Well, I, I think the biggest thing is when you look at that is just the bars, right? Yeah. So that's, in this scenario, you could actually say there's going to be four years. If nothing, everything changes the same based on the scenario. Four years, our debt service is going higher than what you have today, but it's going to bounce right, right back down. Yep. You know what I mean? So yes. I, I, to the right, that's probably 2031, where it drops down below the debt, the red line again. Yeah, 2038 yeah. is when our, our last current obligation right. falls off. Yeah. Um, so again, you know, those are some of the assumptions um, to get us here. Okay, so the next scenario is, is scenario number three, which is new debt scenario. And your eyes are not fooling you. Those are literal true numbers. Um, and you're going to say, oh, my gosh, I'll take give you guys a minute to like consume the fact that we went from two hundred and fifty dollars to a seventeen dollar impact. Joey, how is that? You made a mistake. I didn't. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. 
I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> right? I can sell that. So, I'll pay so, for that. So <laughs> he hadn't found his pack yeah. on sign. <laughs> so here's why, okay? This is the next screen that's going to show. Um, and actually, what I want to bring up also, that I, again, I apologize. I didn't put the assumptions on this one, but I think they're Can I just real quick, Jim, yep. you say 13, whatever, that small dollar amount, that's an, is it, and you're saying that's the net impact mm -hmm. increase. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it, 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 be, be careful, because you're not really kind of comparing 17 to 295. I am. Well, well, no. But I mean, on it, it's the impact, it right? But the cost is still going to be that. Is I want to be really right? yes. clear. No, I think, oh, I, I, think, think clear. I think yes. right. I think both messages. But I did. Go out. I am. Yeah. That is a hundred percent right. There is the difference between two ninety five was because we had a seven hundred and seven thousand dollar payment. Our payment is forty nine thousand dollars in this scenario, which is why there's a difference. Mm -hmm. And the reason we were able to achieve that mm -hmm. is because instead of just um level debt service we used what's called a modified level debt service so we can actually change the terms of our borrowing so this is the method of finance it's the method of financing but it's also the strategy in the financing the so strategy. so if we're looking at um there, there are actually two scenarios that i broke out within this last last scenario yep. one was short-term borrowing and long-term borrowing, and the other was long-term borrowing, and I can talk about the difference of, differences so are, are in you, them. What we did with the police station, are you, are you financing and setting it up so you're paying a little less in the beginning and, and accelerating it in the end? No, uh, well, yes and no. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I can stay as close to possible to that green line mm -hmm. in the upcoming years and in the later years and, and balancing my debt as best I can. And so if you notice from the very first model that they shared, what I basically said is, I want you to take these numbers up here and I want you to bring those down and put them in here. And so basically what we are able to do is use a modified level debt service under chapter 44, section seven is what governs our borrowing, okay? And what we're allowed to do is to modify our debt in such a way that we still pay off the obligations in the same duration um, or faster. So is the blue, part of the blue police station, did we yes. do a 20 year and that's why it's gonna drop off? You know, yes. Then we only do the 20 on the police station? Um, I believe that was a 20. Because it's so it's 17 years if we've been here three and that would make sense. Yep. And so the other thing to, um, to keep in mind, and this is where I wanna make a, another note, so while this is great, okay, I'm gonna have him run one more scenario for me and I'm gonna tell you why. This number, I'm just being fully transparent with you guys, is gonna come up a little bit, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why. 295 was the last number that we looked at using level debt, okay? Or uh, level debt, even if I ran modified level debt, it's somewhere around 250. I don't want to go from 250 to 17 from number one, from a messaging standpoint, because even the experts in this room are going, wait a minute, how is this possible, right? So we wanna make sure that we're doing that. The other thing that we need to be very clear about is we have debt coming down the road for the schools. Right. And we need to be considerate of that. As much as we want this to pass, we have right. to think about the yep. town and all of the needs that are coming down the pike. Absolutely. So if I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the idea that just with this project, we were able to structure debt in this way. What I'm also going to ask him to do is to bump our debt up in FY25 mm -hmm. and possibly 26 and kind of tailor the, the 27, 28 down a tad, mm -hmm. shift them over mm -hmm. so that we're leaving room for right. the school yeah. in the next few years. Okay. Yeah. And so Again, what I don't want to have happen is everybody's happy year one with that orange line, only $49,000, yeah. and then we go to a $89,000 payment. Now we're up over $200,000, well, and then the school point. is going to jump up too. So what I'm trying to do is level us out as best we can to be prepared mm -hmm. for what we know is coming. Yeah, I think that's you to consider the TBT project. Yeah. So although we probably could take the assessment and manage it in the budget. Are you talking about the, the, the HVM? Oh, HVM. Uh, yeah. Okay, keep going. So my point is, you know, you could look at that number and say we can manage that without doing anything. But if we know we're going to take on a significant amount of debt here over a period of time, 
would it make more sense for us from an operational budget standpoint just to roll that into our borrowing so that when it's when he assesses us, we're actually not hitting our our levy, et cetera, to pay BBTs, our share BBTs bill. Does that make sense? It does. The only thing that I get concerned about is well, two two thoughts come to mind. One, um, we have about $128,000 savings from last year. Mm -hmm. So consuming what was it, $16,000 or $25,000? I forget the exact number for our portion of that $10 million 60, debt. 60 plus. 60 plus? First year, no. Okay. So I, 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 have we seen the amortization schedules yet? Yeah, we did. Last night's presentation. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but, so, but, but either it, it, way, it, was, it was a draft too, so it's probably Yeah. Fine. So what I would say is, is twofold. Taking it entirely out of the budget doesn't make sense because it's going to go back in at some point. So I would want to hold that space within the operating budget. Right now, we only pay $9,775 as part of BBT's debt, and that'll be done. So I would just look at it. It's, it's an option for sure. It's probably cheaper money over the longer term, and the 128 reduction operationally, I just soon have that bandwidth operationally going forward. You know what I mean? And not necessarily apply it to a project, sure. but I'll, I'll defer. Um, I'm yeah, just no, thinking the way you're managing right. this now, to roll in tens of thousands of dollars into this schedule, mm -hmm. probably is de minimis mm -hmm. with the way you're thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. So why not? Yeah, and you know, I kind of I push back a little bit because I think we, you know, one point we're saying we have the capability to handle that in our operating budget to handle BVT, the current mm -hmm. ask. And then if we keep on loading up onto this current project. It's not loading on this project. I know it's not a lot, but it'll be next year, right? It'll be a vote for next year. And then you can make a decision if you want to do operational or right next year. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't even affect Yeah, it won't project. affect this project. I'm just saying the way I see that being layered out here over 20 years. Well, wasn't the goal? I've got well, a different I, question. I don't know. I guess I kind of look at that like paying for debt twice. They're securing an obligation, and then we're going to secure an obligation and pay debt mm -hmm. twice. So both paying interest on it. Exactly. So I, I look at it like I can make more money with my money parked in Okay. interest accounts that are bearing 5% right now and probably wipe out, you know, some of the interest we have to if pay in short-term borrowing. If you can exceed make and in, in increase our operational budget with that type of investment as well, yeah. I'm all for it. Yeah. My focus is on managing our operational budget and looking for flexibility in that. I understand. Yeah. No, I mean, Thank I, 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 I this, this to me is like when we first bought our house, we did our first more 30-year mortgage. We had no clue what we could afford you know what i mean so we were very conservative and things like that and we're like well that's interesting um so i look at it this way the same way i'm saying a small even the interest on that money is not going to be you know, my, daughter, my first mortgage i wasn't conservative or my second third or fourth <laughs> messaging jody just you said that that, that first payment is 49 so it really is 17. But yeah. we have to be careful on messaging because it is the first year, but in year eight, it's not 17. The actual value of it yeah. is going to be $500 or something as a payment. Well, actually, so I think I'm what, gonna, I'm gonna show what you we need next. to tell them is, is this is the impact. So focus on the impact mm -hmm. of what it's going to be on your taxes. Right. And the building is what it is, 13.2. You're right. going to pay that over the time no matter what. Right. How you pay it doesn't, you know, it, it's going to be paid within our debt schedule, but this is your impact. Because by saying it's 295 this year and 300 next year, I don't think that's too much information. Yeah, You're going to get lost. Plus, well, won't the they, value of the house increase? I mean, there's, and, there's too many variables. It, yeah, there's and, and way the, too many variables. The main fact is it's 13.2. We're borrowing, yep. and this is your tax impact based on it. For this year. I, I, I think people will be interested in seeing the other debt. I mean, I, mean, I think that these graphics are very, like, mm -hmm. they're very helpful to see, like, Okay, so this is what we're adding now, and then this is what's going to come off. It gives people a view of when the school does come through, right? Where there's a window of opportunity for and, a big, for a big. Investment. And that might be a concern that people have too. It's like, okay, well, what is this going to? How is this going to impact the future needs of the school? And so, Joan, mm -hmm. you're saying that we can arrange this to, like, I think make space yeah. for that. Yeah, like we're we're, we're two planning two ahead. Two. I think this demonstrates a thoughtful, smart approach to borrow and on managing debt, which we probably, I mean, I'd say the police station was probably the first time we tried anything like yeah. this in terms of demonstrating it. it all. But I think it would put, so we had a lot of questions last night. 
was basically saying, what did experts say, right? There's a lot of verbal saying it's this, it's that's the other thing. This substantiates what we're going to say empirically. People can look at it and say, that makes sense to me. It makes me a lot more comfortable to see sort of a, a ramp down in the future. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you can play with it too, Mike, like we do at the police station that said, you know, we waited to do this right now because look at the lines. Yeah. We didn't do it last year because it wasn't the right time to do it. Just like we, the first time we do it was a police station. Mm -hmm. We knew something dropped off and we plugged in there. We're hoping to keep doing that with all of our capital leads exactly. so it doesn't affect the taxpayer mm -hmm. on the debt side of it. Your, oper your operational is always going to affect them. You're always going to have a two and a half override no matter what. Not two and a half, you two and a half increase no matter what. That just has to happen. And you're going you're gonna to be able to play this the yeah. impact of not doing it, Phil. So given that, if we don't do it, now, your 13.2 is going to be 5% mm -hmm. right. higher next year. Mm -hmm. So right. this is a good convergence. And, and we can go back to the police station. We had 20 years to do it. We went from a million to 2 million to 4 million to 6.5 million. It, it didn't go down in price. And, and one of those we turned down, the 2 million we turned down, was an $8 million grant on top of it. And that building currently is worth about $30 million, and they built in another community. So you, you, you're you passing up on opportunities to, the opportunity is now. You can't say there's an opportunity later. Everybody knows with COVID and, and what we've been through in the past five years, things are never going down again. So I'm thinking from a home, just an average homeowner perspective, right? How would this get phrased? I mean, these points are kind of general and cover the overall, and it's a great, visually it looks like a great approach because you're also building in, um, um, Space for right, future, right? But taking it down to the bottom line question of roughly what's it going to mean to me as a homeowner on average over the next yeah, 10 so years? We still need that. Yeah, so I can give that to you. Right. That's a great segue for this, right? right? Yeah. So we can do that. Mm -hmm. So, as I mentioned before, um, and I'll just throw <laughs> these up because it's just really hard to see, but this is kind of like the, the stuff, the boring stuff that you don't want to necessarily look at. Um, but these are some of the drill down details on what I was sharing. So that 49,026, and I'll do this and then flip back to the visual, but Dave, to your comment about what's going to happen in those future years. So we're still only looking at if this is level debt, okay, this becomes my total, my total debt because of the $49,000 payment in year one, year two, I'm only jumping up to a hundred thousand. This, just right off the bat, the scenarios we're looking at at minimum were five hundred to seven hundred thousand dollars, which is why you had a tax impact of two fifty to two ninety five to whatever. So if you look at that and just basic numbers, it doubles. So you're going from seventeen dollars to thirty five, right? So like what I'm trying, I just want to make sure we can look at this and when we share data, we can give that five year projection, understanding that there are some calculations, right. but this is the dollar amount by which our debt gets higher over capacity, over our level debt capacity, okay. so, level so debt service. Looking at that proposed for senior center column then, you structured this so that the senior center bond, I mean, you, you, you're paying more future years out. And you're, you're doing that because you know debt's dropping off in later years. So you're picking up more of the 800,000. Yeah, so we originally were looking at like, 640,000 every year in that neighborhood. And you've structured it such that you're much lower in years one to five. And we're seeing the 800,000 payments for senior center debt 10 years out based on that middle column. Is that what I'm looking at? Yes. Right. So then that, and that's important. And that's probably why we probably want to rethink about, think about the school to maybe so that your, your future year, your later years might be a little smaller than what's represented here. Is that fair? Uh, say that one more time. I'm just like saying, talk about the school to structure it. This, yeah, you might yes. want to push more to the front end because we're taking school debt on the back end. So yeah, so, so this is bucks than yeah, something like that. Right. So so again, if if we look at this and I tell you know our partners at, at Unibank, um, you know, let's look at this area right here. Well, you can't see my mouse. The first five. Um, yeah. yeah, the first five. And you know, increase next year a little bit, right? Double. Because Even we're kind of anticipating that right. exactly. Like maybe exaggerate a little more. bit, and so then you're, you're, kind you're, of you're, the strategy is you've got flexibility to manage new debt coming on by moving some of these 
amounts are forward or back, depending on what. Yes, and, and the way that we, the financing tools that we can do this effectively with are short-term borrowing, which give us the absolute most flexibility for structuring payments. Yeah, can I make a suggestion? Don't go into the strategy, the, the tools you have. Yeah. I'm talking to you guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm telling you guys this. You guys, you guys, the, you guys the debt level may come up. If we talk right. about the debt level, that eventually will come up. Yep. And the only thing we have to stress with that is you're going to get the people on Facebook saying, well, we don't approve it, then the debt goes down and we, our taxes go down. But the debt level, maybe we can, I, I can pull up I, our I DLS, compare it to I'll other towns something. around here and see what their debt level is. And, and just focus that the debt level we need to maintain or your town will fall apart. No, that's sure that's our level services to make sure. It's investment. Exactly. This yeah. is an investment. This is not just. That's our capital and investment. Tell you the one, thing, pretty much. one thing that we have to be super duper careful of ever is taxes are going to go down. Taxes will go down if you have an underwrite. That's how your taxes go down. They will not go up as much if you. If you drop that. Um, drop debt and don't replace it. They just won't go up as much, but they will, your tax <laughs> will go up. That's going to be the minimum. Just by nature of Prop two and a half and new growth, they're going to go up. If that debt comes off and you realize it and don't backfill it, they just, you're. To me, this is, this is, all. this, everybody knows your, your tax bill goes up, right? And, right. and, sir, and you don't want to say it's going to go down, mm -hmm. but I think the story is, a, 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 you're managing. You're managing story. Mm -hmm. You're but managing. See, see Mike, I, I think that's a slippery slope because I don't think that everybody knows that your taxes. They may not are want it to go up, but I know. But you tell people debt falls off. The instant reaction is that my debt. Uh, I mean, it just happens. No, it just is. I'm saying you're not saying drop off. You're managing. Yeah. A financially a debt sound level. debt level for the municipality, so we can make the investments we need to make. The and really we've got the, the finance team is in place to drive a strategy that allows us to maintain to as close as we can a level debt obligation to make it easier for all the taxpayers. We know more debt will be coming. Ask if we can BBT hit us this year. MURSD is going to probably come in with 20 million next year, is my guess, something in that neighborhood. Yeah, well, but we're also positioned to understand where we are today with what we want to do. We're in a good position to deal with tomorrow. You know, and that's a good message because even that meeting I just came out of with the historical uh, one of the people there indicated, well, what about MISCO? They're in that sweet spot. I worried about MISCO when I was here too, but uh, and that's going to hit us. Yeah, it's going to hit us. It's going to hit us. They're not going to ask for a new building. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we heard that last night. Yeah. That that that, uh, that MISCO you can't, is you can't take down that building. Arrowsmith played there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, can't touch it. Well, that's it's historical. Yeah. I didn't even know that. So, yeah. All right, I so guess, why don't we? I told Mike, you're like eight year old. I'm sorry. That is great. He was at the concert. He tells me about it. Yeah. I went down a rabbit hole. Sorry, guys. So that's okay. interesting number, though, if we Let come back. Just, oh, go ahead. Come back. And I think it shows that we're managing the funds if we can figure out a way to do that. You've got to watch for the rabbit holes on this, though. Mm hmm. Uh, and then the impact, Tom, to your point earlier, here's what it means to you. You know, year one, two, three, four, roughly, or a year. Here's what it means tomorrow. It's going to mean to you 35 bucks. I, I think that's how you have to eventually take it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, that's the seller. Right? That's, this, I mean, this scenario mitigates right. impact to the average taxpayer mm -hmm. to the extent we can. And that's a wonderful scenario. I mean, that's. Yeah. that's if you give them the five year. year this is what's going to be for five years. And then if that's going back to level debt, that, that debt's going to, that investment is going to drop down to the, the, the green line again. I think we can make reasonable assumptions, not commitments in the next five years. I would agree with that. that yeah. That's all. No, you can't make based on no, uh, other okay. debt projects. I mean, well, because if you have an override, that's different than this. Well, it's also not necessarily based on the debt project, but the climate in the town itself, in terms of the overall town's valuation and the tax rate. Those are the two drivers. Based on that, then we can see what the debt impact would be based on what we're borrowing or what, what our payments will become. So Those just, are the critical factors that change every single year. I don't even the key is you are managing it. Mm -hmm. We're not just mm -hmm. letting it happen to us. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that happened in the past, but I get a sense in the past it was very much, this is what it's going to cost. And people just said, okay. And this is demonstrating an approach and a management financially that is very sound, 
and uh, future looking, which I think is mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that wins half the audience. I'm going to say the other half are the old shotgun people. Yeah. But, you know, they won't just they'll gloss over here. No, no, yeah, I think there's a slide there, just the, the house value. This mm -hmm. house value is that. Okay, are we going to have that in our, we're going to put that in our new packets that we're going to do? We're going to have a page. So if somebody's house is worth 300000 500000 because that's what they're going to want to see. Yeah, so right. are you going to drill that down more? Are you going to increase, you, how much do you want to increase the, what do we think is a good idea to increase the top? So basically, you well, get the target. yeah, so basically it's, I'm not going to get these numbers until next week. I've pushed and pressed a little hard. But, and got but if, I'm saying the board's not comfortable with 17 because we think. It looks too low. Yeah, it looks too well, low. It, well, well I will be honest with you. I wouldn't. I'm not putting that forth as even an option. And here's why: it's because of the other considerations. No, I got you. Right. What, that, what, what, what should we be targeting? You, you let it out of the bag. We no, and that's why. <laughs> I, will tell you everything I know. I'm not yeah, sure that everybody is watching. Box. But is is there something you think, as representatives from the board and our board, that we think would be a reasonable number to present to the town? My for five years? Yeah, my recommendation is twofold. One, bring our our debt service. You know, in the the upcoming year, like yeah. this fiscal year, yeah. closer between the impact to taxpayers closing the gap between seventeen and two fifty, mm -hmm. like as far as impact right. to taxpayers. I think like a sale at one one eighty one ninety nine. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like one eighty for five hundred thousand in your office, like a week and a half ago. That was different. I know it was different, <laughs> but that was. I mean, I'm saying the number resonated with me. I said, yeah. that's, and but I that, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I. I, I Again, got back to him and said, look, thanks, this looks great. However, I want to be able to present something that is a little bit closer to the last message that we sent and targeted under 200, mm -hmm. but over 150, like somewhere for the first that, five for the 500,000. Yeah, for the first five years and then exactly. it drop down. Exactly. So we can kind of jump it up and kind of tailor it, you know, to adopt the, you know, the school impact and such. We've been talking in terms of uh, households so far. What about the business side of it? Commercial. Same thing. We Same have, thing. We have the, yeah, so, so the only difference this year, and it's it's literally pennies. We have technically have a split tax rate, and it's because of the senior work off. Uh, sorry, yeah. they're not the yeah. the senior so that's an they exemption, and, and and so it, it that was okay. Anyways, um, there's not much of a difference. Okay. It's going to be and, actually, and, and, and is homeowners pay slightly more than businesses because of the way that the law is written. Okay. Okay. For doing yeah. that means tense. Right. Means to meet the express. Right. right. Yeah, 187. 150 is a nice number. Yeah. But if you break that down to a quarter, mm -hmm. by that, by four. Right. And and access Just to buy tickets. Just don't take it down to a cup of coffee. I, I was going to I'm targeting like That's one, exactly what you said the other night. A cup of coffee would be more a day. I was buying into that concept. Mm -hmm. Just put a buck away a day. 170 somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're if you're leading with a one on a half a million dollar house, I think you're in pretty good shape. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. extremely favorable. Yeah. Uh, Joey, that's great job. Yeah, this is, this yeah. is really, this is and great news. Too. Not only on the number, but the fact that we're really actually, go oh, to your point, Mike, as we go through all this stuff, operational budget, that I can see MISCO coming in here and saying, Hey, I got you. I got your back. Or if I see the next, you know, fire station or the next whatever it may be. The, the other thing that this does is, is, again, to Mike's point, it shows the financial acumen of the team to be able to say, we're securing what we need to do for the town and leaving space for you, but we're not letting you come into the, you know what I mean? Like, just, we're just trying to do do our part for the town and keep us level as best we can, knowing that we might have to go over what we're accustomed to because we're all growing. Um, but it doesn't leave sort of the, the caverns open to just, oh, well, they can afford X, Y, Z. Look at their debt well, rolling off. And we know? might want to look at, like I said, I don't want to look at the DLS or calling someone that one green line for local communities that are, that are like us. What are they at? Where are their lines? I guarantee they're higher. In terms of um, I guarantee they're higher. Yeah. I guarantee you everybody has a higher debt, debt level serv debt service than us right now. You know, we're we're probably on the lower end of it. Yeah, I was going to say, though, the only, that is a good point. I think that there are different metrics to look at only because there's other factors. That's all. Um, just with the town valuations and things like that. So just because someone has a higher level, you know, debt service. But it, it there's a great resource that Dave mentioned. Who's the debt service? Uh, in terms of the borrowing? Yeah. 
who sets it. This is just historical over time. What we what we borrow. The, 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 the green line. Right. The so green that. line. The, the reason we kind of establish it when debt rolls off yeah. is so that there's minimal this to taxpayers. Oh, yeah. we're done. That, we're that's not an done. arbitrary line. I mean, we could set that green line right. to be yeah. that much or, higher and then maintain that. Or like yeah. that green line was. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. That green right. line was essentially yeah. set when we did the police station, right? Because right. well, we decided to honestly the, balance the green line is, is set to the fact that if if in the year before you secure debt, like what are we accustomed to, right? right. So it's it's more from, from tax year to tax year, the critical point is that next big drop. So it's no historical. Yeah. So it's historical. Absolutely. I, I yeah. think the biggest the thing is we never, the town really never managed to a green line before. That's the biggest change. That's what the police came on. We never did it. But you know, with yeah. that presentation, talk introduced the concept of a green line, how we can repurpose debt falling off. But you can do that. Managing you. level debt, yeah. We've never done that. Operation standpoint, I don't think we really had a green line that we no, actively managed. Seen that before, but I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, that, and that green line might. But well, you can't just pick it out of the air. It's got to come up. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, the, it, it, I think it came from when we did the police station, but our highest yeah, debt was at the time. Yeah. And I remember in 2016, Kim and I were looking at it, and we had higher debt. I think to pull that back up, we we waited till we saw. I can't connect. That's okay. Um, I think it was it was one project that fell off, and that's when we said that's the year we have to do it, just like with this one. No, that's the answer the question. I just wonder who set that green line. Would they just pick it out of history. history. Just history. Yeah. History. I mean, it was set based on the fact that yeah, the history of the we have all the years. Yeah, I don't think it was really set aside from the fact that. I think what we did with the police station. It's a that's fundamental it, that's it. budgeting. Yeah, we just concept. said we want to kind not, of keep it steady. Yep. Sure. And that that level is just based steady based on our current debt levels. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think when we did the PD, what we said is we know taxes are going to go up. We don't want to make the taxes go up even more because of the building. Right. So when Rich Rich actually most of the data for it, when would be the best time to That's a slide way. that in? Up and down, exactly. Up and down, up and, and down. And if you probably look historically back to the eighties and nineties, it probably it was did. Better. It did. I didn't. I don't know. Yeah. So let me just show you the rest of what I have, um, and, and I can send this out to you guys in a PDF so that you can kind of reference it. I'll clean it up a little bit because what I wanted to show you was the assumptions on scenario three, um, and they're basically the, the major differences um, from, say, scenario two. I just kind of flip through that just real quick. Um, the major differences from scenario two was that you know, it's it's still the 13.2 30-year duration. It is stacked against debt. Um, it is planned for FY25. Um, we are not we are not um, doing a debt exclusion that was strategic based on not having two different articles on the warrant. We can just secure the debt through a short-term borrowing. Um, it is still using FY24 calculation data. And again, the payment that we are basing this tax impact on is forty nine thousand oh twenty six. Um, so that is, that's basically why you know you see such a, a small increase. And that number is um, going to be seventy one hundred seventy thousand, whatever it's going to be when you look at yeah, one hundred five. Yeah. I think it was or yeah, two one hundred five. Yeah, and, and again, that it's going to be subject to change. So I don't want to talk about yeah, it too yeah. too much. Yeah. But yes, the yeah. idea is is that we're going to try to keep it. Yeah. Um, to leave capacity for the schools and kind of take that third, fourth, and fifth orange line and try to move them this way just a tiny bit. Um, because again, if we want to start, you know, our messaging and make sure that we close the gap on that, that's that actually a great we can way take to get, on more. Get the next collaboration year. across organizations in this town would be good. Have they said We're anything? We're working on it. I know, good. Have they said anything about looking at the current bonds and the first five years refinancing that? money into this project to get you know, a low, no, and that, low that's a rate. great point i hadn't thought about that um but i would just look at interest rates my yeah, suspicion sure. is is that the rates were lower higher. um and they're probably higher now mm -hmm. so um i can check on it because it's just good due diligence but i i don't know we, we, we did see opportunities of savings with the police station we, we mm -hmm. financed all the debt back then yeah because the debt was secured sense. in the early the debt climate right now is about well. The um the the debt issuance climate right now um, in municipal space sort of lags the the general market mm -hmm. um, when bonds get issued. So we're around three and a half percent, three and a quarter, three and a half percent. 
Um, so I, I suspect that you probably secured debt around two and a half percent, yeah, two and three quarters. So, but again, thank you for that because I can go back and look just as good due diligence. Somebody's going to ask why are we going to 30 years instead of 20 years? I know that question's going to come up. We can look at it. We can ask. I'm just saying, at it. Somebody, yep. I'm not against it. I'm saying somebody's going to ask that question. <laughs> Somebody's going to say, well, oh, we never looked at it. You can look at the outline. Well, here's the good thing, too. Think you can get close. Yeah, so here's the good thing, too. Right now, I'm focusing on the first couple of years. Yeah. The first, right? So right. here's why. So we don't have to make a decision on a 30 year note right. right now. In this model, we have really the ultimate flexibility. We can secure short term borrowing right up until we have RFPs in hand. So when we get to that point, we can say, all right, We'll have more information from the school. We'll know what's coming down the pipe. Well, there might be another project on the horizon. Who knows? But at that point, right up until the day we say, you know what? We need to pay these people. Like, we literally can secure debt right up until then and run these scenarios again and yep. say, you know what? 20 years makes sense now. We just got a whole slew of money from such and such, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so we can see, but it does afford us a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Yep. Well, just the questions that I know somebody's going to ask. Yeah. But when we're speaking to the public, we're saying 30 years. So if they ask us, we're saying 30. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Yes, and, and for the sake of modeling, yeah, for the, we're exactly. using 30 year, but we're managing the debt in such a way that we've got flexibility to do what's best by the town oh, and well. mitigate impact. Yeah, taxes. based on information available to us, when we're ready to secure the debt. So be 30 years max. Mm -hmm. okay. You're saying yeah. be 30 years max could be less. People yeah. should be able to get that concept of 30. I mean, most people have 30 year mortgages yeah. in general, you know. So, so again, my my big thing here was to make sure you guys understood the assumptions that went with the models and the visual that accompanied that, so you could kind of understand it. So I hope that was clear. Um, the recap, sort of, the, or the I, I will put that sort of in a recap slide before this one. But again, the important reminders for me: it's illustration. It's based on the information we know. Changing markets dictate interest rates. Um, and then preparing for ATM. However, we can I can be helpful in sharing information or getting language or you mm -hmm. know the best way to convey this information. Um, mm -hmm. Bar chart slides, like and whatever like, I can do to help. Prepare for open houses, not ATM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we're oh, doing yeah. the open houses. Twenty fourth will be what you're doing right. at the ATM. Yeah, one. the twenty fourth is really the dry run for ATM. Yeah. You know, if I look at what you have, this is fantastic, by the way. I think great job, Jimmy. Thanks. What I'd like to see, you know, when I think about simplicity. He's asking for more. You see that already? He didn't yeah. even, all the data you have. I think you need to show the people how you're managing it, showing that profile so you're looking at debt so we can handle future needs and requirements. I think it's important. Uh, rec recognizing the fact that it's a $13.2 million big project. And then coming in with the assessment toward the end, what's it, what's it impact to the taxpayer for a one, two, three, five years? Whatever the assumptions you build in to get that, mm -hmm. your scale, is your green scale is different so we can take on more right. projects? Yep. Because we need to take on more. Yeah. Because we traditionally just went, oh, we need to take a project on. And I think you tie in what you're saying too, that it is a big project, but we tie in the numbers that Peg and Amy got from the buildings around us and say it's big, but it's not unreasonable. Right. It, it, it's, and it's, mm -hmm. we have made cuts. This building was 15. 17. Was it 17? Yeah. Okay. No, this building was 17. Why did you get 17? Yeah. <laughs> Was oh, it the original? No, the original was nine. Okay. But the original was nine, how many years ago? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we're down the remodel. So, and the, the unequal right, nine million dollar building now, they did was 17, right? Yeah. So, we've cut down the original building. So, that's even a great example right there. The, we're getting less of a building we could have got for nine if we would have done it years ago because that building is now 17. So, what are we going to get if we keep waiting? Well, it also speaks to this is not just a wish list, this is actually thoughtful approach taken in consideration impact to the you know the voters that's right and considering that you know the people the senior population the community yeah. large needs this and it's to me the biggest thing is there's at every point you can point at to whether it's financing or design that a lot of thought has gone into this and i think that's really a message you probably want to get out there you know the decisions being made. And it's a multi-purpose building that yeah. the town needs. Multi -purpose. We're establishing a building that can take care of three departments. And it's comparable to existing sister towns like Upton's at 12.8 and some of the other builds that happened. We're not extravagant. 
or in, in, in scope? I don't, I don't know that uh, after kind of being involved with up in and meeting with those folks and seeing, I don't know if that's comparing apples to apples. It's because not, it's a library yeah, and a library senior center. center. But we're a, we're a senior center, a food pantry, and an emergency management center. And potentially a library yeah. annex, if you think. So I would say we're actually Sorry. more than them. Right. I think we should. I think we should go in hours. Right. How many? How many square foot? Actually, senior center, community center, as compared to the library. How many feet is the library? There's some shared spaces, oh, of course they were. but but it's almost like I got the impression that it, the senior center was kind of like a bulldog. on the yeah. outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, it's primarily a library. library. All right, I'm gonna get this meeting yeah, under control before it turns into a select board yeah. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We have midnight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so anything else, Joe? No, you guys have anything okay. else for me? No, we appreciate what you, the work that you put into this. Very good. All right, so things we have. Uh, Are you prepared to present the 18th? Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, the 24th. I think we're good here. All the graphs and stuff, though. There'll be so many questions. This ties into the next thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't want to be until midnight. Let's go. Gavel. <laughs> Our next agenda item ties into this, the next steps for town meeting and for town vote. So I think we, you, you have everything under control. The board has everything under control with town meeting and the, the ballot question. So then the next steps would be just the open house and then whoever wants to present. Um, they did ask that though, everyone who's going to present. I said most likely the architect and then you and I will be able to assist and then anybody else who wants to have all questions and then we'll have the support from the board. Yeah, I think the architect should so. present and also have I plan to have uh, DNL there too, in case some background questions come up. Yep. Not at the main center, but somebody can say, when you dug the hole, what do you find? So you can be there. Yeah, it, that's been talked about the contaminants, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that was a question. But I mean, contaminants go away after a period of time. It came well, back zero. It came back clean. It's everywhere. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if there was an orchard there 40 years ago, the contaminants don't stay there forever. No, of course not. Yeah. Everything dissipates eventually into the soil. Yeah. So, all right, so we get that one done. Future grants and other funding. Do we have any updates on that? Or just keep trucking along until we get it. Yeah, the only strange thing that happened since the last time we met is uh, Dave, our ex interim TA, asked us to put it, and Mike Morelli asked us to put something in for an earmark. So we had a fire drill last week where we built out a earmark grant submission. I'll send you the input that we gave them. I sent it to Amy. I, I solicited my son-in-law's help. He's a principal at Uxbridge, a great writer and English teacher, and he also does grants all the time for his business. Right. So he put it together and we submitted it and everybody loved it. And earmarks an election year, I'm not expecting that. I was but about to say that. There's a lot of promises being made this year. That's just for this group. I'm not going to say we're going to get anything because I don't think election, everybody says, hey, I'm going to take care of you, and then they're gone. A lot of promises made. I have another question. Well, they don't get Mark, back in. He's still here. Yeah. Mark, are you still here? I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> Does the fact that we're not compliant in the town for emergency uh, situations, does that, is, is it, we're putting this out as one of the reasons why we need this. But are, are we in danger of any kind of uh, sanctions or anything like that? No. No. Okay. Just safety. The only thing that's holding us back uh, with the current senior center is we don't have a sh uh, shower there. Otherwise, right. we would be a full emergency shelter. So Red Cross is willing to work with that because there's other options. And um, that's why it was important that we included the showers in the new yeah. senior center uh, so that we can be a full uh, emergency shelter. That's the only thing that we're lacking right now. That and some place to put animals, uh, which can always be created down the road. Dave, we got to circle back on the generator, mm -hmm. too. Okay. Thanks, Thank you, Joey. Joey. Thank you. Thanks, Joey. Thank you, uh, All right, so we get that. So then we can move right back to this new business or anything else. That's a, lots of agenda. So the, the generating will circle back with your board, not here. Or, yeah, I just need, right. like, the cost. And, yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My question is, um, if we were going to do a flyer, say an insert for the newspaper, what kind of information would you have? What how would you want it to be this financial? I think that that they want, people are going to want to know that. 
see that chart. That's, that that's probably more important than the cost. Right. So yeah, what is the true. cost for them? And I think, I mean, if it's right, if it's just information about the project and the needs, as opposed to like you know, say please vote yet, yeah, mm -hmm. we can still say like when the votes are and have all that information. And that, I mean, I don't know what sort of budget this, like this committee has, but any, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I guess that would the message. You, I guess would be. You think it's better off break it down so much per thousand, or keep it at medium price of a house is how much it's going to be. They probably don't even know how much well, they have. I, mean, I think they we need to wait for the, the numbers from Jody. To yeah. I think the way we have a list with the, you know, the 250, 500, it's fine. Then you pick it. Uh, on the put so much a thousand. Uh, but if they care enough, they'll just look at the tax bill and say, right, that's what it does that. A lot of people don't even see a tax bill. So yeah. that's true. Yeah. How would they know if their house well, is assessed at? Uh, right, no business? No business? No business? No. No business? Okay. Uh, next meeting, Phil, what do you want to do for next meeting? Back to Tuesday. Next Tuesday? Two, 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 two weeks? Two weeks Tuesday. So oh, we need to escalate. Two weeks Tuesday, I think. Two weeks Tuesday. We're going in between this one. So that'd be the ninth? Yeah. Okay. We'll do the next meeting on April 9th. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Good. Thank Favor? you. Aye. 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 <laughs> okay, thank Good you. Night, guys. Guys. Good night, guys. Good night. Thanks, Lonnie. See you, Lonnie. April 9th, is that what you said? Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Lonnie. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Lonnie. So, I think you can go around the business and put some of these flyers out that people can.